Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker and in this video we're gonna be reviewing a high stakes hand played fairly deep big pot between Linus Slav, also known as Born to Tilt on ACR, and Vesna Pisarovic, who's also I think a well-known probe, I'm not sure what is exactly the name, maybe one of the viewers can help us out in the comments. But yeah, 100-200 on ACR poker, and let's get into it. So preflop starts with a 2.5x raise, and Linus Love calls. 8-7-4 rainbow, Linus checks, and we see a pot bet from Vensa Pisarovic, which is, you know, my general assumption would be this is an inappropriately sized bet for this board texture. The way this board texture works is that out of position hits quite a lot of strong hands, right? Out of position has hands like 7-8 and 5-6 and all the pocket pairs full in his range. And so I'm not sure in position has a lot of hands that want to build huge pots because the top part of the range is shared by both players. And when this is a situation, you generally don't start out with very big bets and you maybe take them later after out of position has filtered the top part out by check raising. So I'm actually a bit surprised to see this bet size. All that being said, even though I'm surprised to see the bet size, there's usually not very much EV loss by taking these unorthodox flop bet sizes. It's definitely putting your opponent into a spot where he's not going to know what to do. Like, what do you do with 10-8 here? Or King-7? Or something like Ace-5? Suddenly you're facing a size that you're not used to and you're more prone to make mistakes. So a nice play in that sense, for sure. Linus check raise is small. So he's saying, you know, whatever the core of your range, I'm beating it, whether it's with a set or two pair or a straight. Generally, when these straight boards are higher, it needs to be at least top two to, to raise. And I don't know what the polarized bet indicates, but yeah, Linus is saying some, something of that sort. Gets the call, which of course can be fairly wide in terms of, you know, over pairs and board pairs and so on and so forth. Turn 9 of hearts does actually shift things because now there is a new 16 combos of not hands of jack 10 and a new 4 combos of 10-6 suited. So 20 new combos, both of which could be represented in both players' ranges have kind of entered the mix. And this greatly shifts the value of your hand. So if you have 7-8, certainly not very strong. I don't know how strong sets are even at this point. And we're very deep, so very unintuitive small. Here Linus goes with a 75% bot bet, which I think is appropriate given both players have tons of nuts. It's not like you can close your eyes and overbet and, and get snacks in with many combos. He gets called, which again, you know, is it 6-7? Is it pocket 10s or 10-9? Is it a set or two pair? Maybe aces is still calling at this point. Like there are lots of hands that can potentially be in there. And Linus, you know, we talked about the value range where we said sets and straights, basically, I think at this point. What about the bluffing range? The bluffing range is probably backdoor flush draw didn't turn. So anything with a 6 or a 10, whether it's king 10, 10, 5 suited, ace 5, ace 6, king 6, maybe a pair with a 6, like a 6, 7 or a 4, 6. River queen of spades actually changes absolutely nothing. Linus goes for a 75%-ish all-size bet. In my eyes, I would guess the, the threshold for this is somewhere between 5, 6, and pocket 8s. I'm not sure, but just like I said, all the straights on the board make me feel fairly bad about putting in tons of money without a straight. I don't know if Linus has 5, 6 off, but so many straights, guys. Very, very unorthodox board in terms of how strong a set is in position shoves, so he should have, I guess, 10-6 plus, 10-6 suited or jack-10. Maybe he can shove 5-6 as well. Depends how, how Linus constructs his range. And Linus decides to make the call. This is, guys, a 72k pot, so almost 200 big blind pot. Linus shows down pocket fours, which in my eyes is too loose. I would guess this is a low frequency check raise. I wouldn't think it could bet river this big, but I'm probably wrong. We'll, we'll see soon. And in position shows jack-10 of hearts, so very naturally play jack-10. And pocket fours, 
you know, feels like an overplay to me, but I'm probably wrong. And we will actually see soon because we have PO Solver to look through as backup. So not the exact range break structure, but we'll get things going. And the way I'm going to do this, like I said, I don't think pot size is correct, but given it was used where we're going to put it in, we're going to put in that we are 180 big blinds deep. So we're going to have effective stacks at 35,500 and the starting pot is going to be 1,100. As you build these trees, you get to filter out some stuff to make things not run as super duper huge. Okay, so check flop, pot band position, like I said, I don't think this is a correct size, but fair enough. And in terms of Linus's strategy, he does get to check raise pocket fours and four, seven, eight, four, very low frequency, seven, eight gets in there and six, five gets in there. And yeah, all sorts of bluffs, like we were saying, we got the full rainbow nine of diamonds turn after the check raise. This is a turn on which, as you guys can see, Linus has to slow down a ton. But let me quickly just make sure we have the correct sizings for the turn. Because Linus went 75 here. So it's very, very, very interesting spot in terms of the turn. Basically one of the worst turns in the deck for Linus. The fact that in position has all these jack tens and pocket nines makes it so that you can rarely even continue betting. So despite having the polar check raise range, you kind of have to slow down and you can bet fours, but not Linus's size. That's not a size that, that you have and then you just slow down. You don't have nearly as much jack ten as the other guy and you don't have nines and you're, you're just in a problem, in a world of hurt, so to speak. But yeah, Linus decides to bet in position, gets to fast play tons of jack ten because it's his card. He has all the, all the best hands. In this case, we see a call. Queen of Spades River, and here, you know, not a node we're ever supposed to be in. But given we are here, is four is good enough to bet? The solver kind of says yes. When you look at Evie's check and bet, Linus's size are the same. So Linus kind of entered the wrong line, but the amount of money put in is okay if your opponent fast plays all these jack tens and pocket nines and ten sixes. Of course, if he doesn't, it becomes quite terrible. And yeah, once you bet and get raised, and like we said, Pio has zero combos here, pocket fours can call. Now, it's kind of weird to look at a hand like this where the line doesn't exist. So the way I would handle this in a solver, if I wanted to see like was Linus overplaying is I would delete the other sizes for Linus, and I would add a small stamp sizing for in position, which I now see is missing on the turn, and which might, you know, make Linus have more of an incentive to, to actually bet. Sometimes when you're missing a stamp size, it's going to be the thing that leads the other player to take a certain action. But no, we still have roughly 0% betting. Just not your card. But... At least now we have a few combos. The line exists more than 0%. And yeah, it does look like it's an overplay to bet river with fours. The threshold would be roughly sevens, but it's a small nuance. I think the big takeaway, and it's very interesting to see Linus miss this, but the turn card is so terrible for you, you can't keep betting. It's very rare when you check raise, but the key thing for you guys in your head should be my opponent turned 20 straight and three set combos, and I have less of these. And so my entire check raise range and all of my knotted hands that I put in there are now not terribly strong anymore. So even though the hand was played well by Linus, I have a feeling maybe this is the first time I've caught him actually misunderstanding one of the spots that he's playing. In terms of the ranges and the strategy, and this, I mean, we're, we're all human, you're 180 deep. Probably for 100 deep line is called this correct, but as you get deeper, the fact that your hand isn't the nuts matters more and more and more. So yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. 
like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.